The series Futurama follows the adventures of Philip J. Fry after he is cryogenically frozen for a thousand years before waking up in the 31st century. The show's pilot episode first aired on Fox on the 28th of March 1999 and received critical acclaim, as were the series throughout its run. The show was created and co-developed by Matt Groening, and as of September 2020, it's the second animated television series that he's created, along with The Simpsons and Disenchantment. In 1997, after the phenomenal success of The Simpsons, Groening teamed up with a former writer for the series, David X. Cohen, to develop Futurama. During Groening's time in the television industry, he's had a number of roles, though he's predominantly worked as a producer. Writing is his second most notable industry position. However, despite the extensive run of The Simpsons and Futurama, Groening has surprisingly few writing credits to his name, other than the token credit of having created the characters in his various TV series. In terms of writing credits for The Simpsons, Groening has just four out of the 600 plus episodes. Interestingly, he had nothing to do with the pilot episode of the series. This isn't surprising, as his only experience of writing for television at the time was for The Tracy Ullman Show. On the other hand, it's noteworthy, because his only writing credits for both Futurama and Disenchantment are for the pilot episodes of those series. And while the first episode of Disenchantment received mixed reviews, the pilot episode of Futurama received mostly acclaim. And for good reason, as it's one of the best pilot episodes you'll ever see for a television series. There's plenty of TV pilots out there that are good. Just talk to me for one second. Just hang on a second. But truly great ones are rare. <laughs> Regardless of the genre and subject matter, there are core things that need to be detailed in a pilot episode of a TV series. Character, tone, and themes, aesthetic, and the overall big picture of a series all need to be either established or at least alluded to, all of which the pilot for Futurama does perfectly. Despite the show being set in a distant future in which pretty much anything and everything is possible, Futurama was always rooted in humanity, illustrated through individuals and their emotions, and the pilot episode perfectly balances world building and character development. In terms of character, tone, and the aesthetic of the show, Futurama manages to establish all three key aspects of the show within the cold opening. Within just the first three or so minutes of the 22-minute episode, the lead character, Fry, is concisely established as a depressed drifter, incompatible with the modern world, unhappy with his life situation, I hate my life, I hate my life, I hate my life. Who escapes into the far school world of video games. <laughs> Someone who would welcome waking up a thousand years into the future. However, also established later in the episode is Fry's realization that, despite his initial joy at waking up in the future, My co-workers. I'll never see any of them again. Yahoo! There's a lot of things from his past life that he's now lost. Everyone I ever knew or cared about is gone. An issue which is later explored in depth throughout the rest of the series. Although the episode revolves around Fry, Leather and Bender also feature heavily in the pilot, and each of the three all have important decision moments that not only inform the audience of their distinct personalities, but also establish their morality and set important events of the show into action. Although Fry is initially tempted to leave Leela to remain frozen for a thousand years, like he was, he soon realizes how unfair it would be to make that decision for someone else. See you in a thousand years. <laughs> <sighs> You owe me one. Bender, who is supposedly programmed to only use his powers for constructive purposes, is persuaded by the combination of Fry's rant and a power surge to reevaluate his personal sense of right and wrong. It's up to you to make your own decisions in life. You're full of crap, Fry. You make a persuasive argument, Fry. As for Leela, despite being indoctrinated into the mentality of doing a job that you hate just because, you gotta do what you gotta do. She, ultimately, makes a decision to live life on her own terms. What are you doing? Quitting. Why? Because I've always wanted to. Which eventually leads to the premise at the core of the series, with her, Fry, and Bender working in the delivery business. Are you three by any chance interested in becoming my new spaceship crew? Additionally, just as the episode is commendable for the way it introduced the show's main characters, it also deserves praise for knowing when less is more, and makes the crucial decision not to introduce key supporting characters until later in the series. Specifically, the other employees at Farnsworth's business, Planet Express. Hi Despite the fact that they later play major roles over the course of the series, Graining and Cohen knew to hold off introducing them until the second episode, rather than almost certainly ruining the pace of the pilot episode by over-explaining the key supporting characters of the show when they really didn't need to.
In the case of Future Warmer in its pilot episode, the show had the added task of having to detail an almost completely new world. Despite the complexity and alienating nature of the world of Futurama, Greening and Coyne managed to find the perfect balance of revealing just enough about the world and the characters to engage the audience, without overloading them with information, regarding the society and the characters' respective personalities and backstories. Another important aspect of the pilot episode is planting and payoffs, particularly in regards to the themes and the overall big picture of the show. At the time, it was unusual for an animated series to have a mythology with an overarching storyline, something which was usually only seen in drama series. Still, Greening knew that he wanted there to be a number of mysteries to be revealed over the run of the series. There's Leela and her true identity. My parents abandoned me here as a baby, and I know how it feels to be alone. More notably, though, there's a reason for the series itself, with Fry's seemingly accidental freezing. <laughs> which is later revealed to be both intentional and of great importance. In a thousand years, for one moment, the fate of the universe will depend on you. So, Graining and Cohen planted an Easter egg for fans, alluding that there was perhaps a reason for the accident that led to Fry being frozen. A key aspect of world building for Futurama, which is quickly established in the pilot episode, was that, despite the numerous impressive advances in technology of the show's universe, it was important that the future be neither a utopia or a dystopia, as most science fiction films and television typically are. Mmm, Soylent Green is my kind of people. The reason for this was that Greening and Cohen wanted to be able to address current day social issues, particularly in regards to the environment. Thus, the series needed to be relatable to an audience of the 21st century. These papers. Garbage. This picture of your wife. Pure garbage. Another aspect of the current day world that Granny and Cohen wanted to criticize was the reason why humans have largely failed to evolve as both a species and a global society, which they saw as being a result of selfishness and apathy. Ultimately, Zap Brannigan, who is introduced later in the series, epitomizes the horrifically inappropriate narcissist who manages to fail upwards and reap havoc on the world. Let's see what this eatery can do. <laughs> Control. You win again, gravity! However, another example of absurdly dangerous leadership is the head of Richard Nixon. <laughs> Greening always wanted current day celebrities to make cameos in the show, despite being set a thousand years into the future, and he established a way around this with the technology that enables celebrity heads to be preserved in jars. Leonard Nimoy and Dick Clark made cameos in the pilot episode, while Billy West, the voice actor for Fry and Professor Farnsworth, impersonates Nixon. Initially, the appearance of the former president appears to simply be for the sake of a few throwaway jokes. That's it. You just made my list. However, later in the series, Nixon's head becomes president of Earth in an episode highly critical of voter ignorance and apathy. <laughs> Who's kicking who around now? It was years between Greening coming up with the idea for Futurama and the first episode of what would become a long-running television series. Writing and producing a pilot episode is a difficult and tedious endeavor that requires a tremendous amount of focus, thought, and effort, even when those involved make a sincere commitment. There's no guarantee that the end results will reflect the efforts made. Fortunately, in the case of Futurama, the pilot episode managed to realize the show's potential, thanks largely to Graining and Cohen's script, which concisely managed to introduce and establish the key characters of the show, illustrate their goals, introduce conflict, and allude to future plot points, all the while building the almost completely alien world of the series without ever overloading the audience with too much information, making for one of the best, if not the best, pilot episode for a television series that's ever been produced. Soylent Green is my kind of peeper.